Every region with a coastline has its own version of seafood stew. Think of bouillabaisse or chipino or even gumbo. And most of these stews have a broth-based sauce, but not in Brazil. The famous Brazilian seafood stew called moqueca has a base of tomatoes and coconut milk, kind of like a Thai curry. And in addition to all the seafood, it usually includes lots of vegetables and a bright citrusy sauce. And today, Becky's gonna show us how it's done. That's right, moqueca is so fast and so easy to prepare. And aside from the fish and the condiments, you might already have most of the ingredients on hand. Super impressive for a weeknight. It's really good for entertaining. All around great dish. I'm in. All right, let's do it. So let's start with the fish. Now in Brazil, you'd use whatever's fresh, the catch of the day. You could use any combination of seafood. We're gonna keep it simple. We're using a pound of skinless cod. Easy to find. Super easy. And also a pound of large shrimp. There's 26 to 30 in a pound. So we're gonna cut the fish. It's about three quarters to one inch thick and we're gonna cut it into one and a half inch chunks. All right. So this piece actually comes from the top of the cod filet. It's known as the captain's cut. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, so it's a nice evenly thick filet. It cuts up into nice even pieces. Very nice. Okay, so one and a half inch chunks here. Nice big stew sized pieces. Yeah, these are gonna simmer in liquid. They might break apart a tiny bit, which is fine. So you want substantial pieces. So if you can't find cod, you can mm -hmm. use haddock. Really any firm white fish would be fine here. So there's our fish. Okay, so now we're adding a pound of peeled and deveined shrimp. I noticed you took the tails off. I did, this is a stew. Sometimes it's nice to leave the tails on, especially mm -hmm. if you're doing more like a finger food type of thing. But because we're eating this with a spoon, I took the tails off. That makes sense. And now I'm adding three cloves of garlic. Ooh, hello. Minced up. Now in Brazil, they typically marinate the fish in lime juice. We tried that and we found that it made the fish a tiny bit dry, a little bit yeah. stringy. It's almost like ceviche. Yes, because it's the lime starts to denature the proteins in the fish. It starts to cook a little bit. Right. So we're gonna leave that out. We'll add the lime juice later. Okay. We're just adding half teaspoon of salt and a quarter teaspoon of pepper. And we'll give this a little stir. And now the salt and the pepper and the garlic will season the fish. It's gonna mm. be a really nice flavor. Okay, so now the fish is done. Let's move on to make the base of the stew. Okie doke. So I have one 14.5 ounce can of whole tomatoes here. Just a little bit, it's gonna add some brightness. Mokeka gives you a surprising amount of flavor with just a few ingredients. A lot of liquid must come out of that fish. Yes, it does, and that's gonna flavor the stew as well, and it's gonna loosen up the broth too. So that was the can of tomatoes with their juices. One onion, chopped up, and a quarter cup of fresh cilantro, also chopped. Almost looks like you're making salsa. I know, actually, I want this to be the texture of a pureed salsa. Oh, okay. So I'm gonna let this rip for about 30 seconds. All right, that looks good. It doesn't mm -hmm. need to be perfectly smooth, like I said, just like a pureed salsa. So we'll let that sit for a second. It smells good. And we'll move on over here. I'm gonna get some medium high heat. I have two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. It's just about starting to shimmer here. Mm -hmm. So I have one green pepper, one red bell pepper. I've seeded, stemmed them, and chopped them into half inch pieces. And I'm putting in a half teaspoon of salt. This is gonna make the stew nice and colorful. It's gonna give it a little bit of flavor. So we'll cook these over medium high heat just until they start to soften a little bit. That'll take five to seven minutes. Okay. Been about seven minutes, and you can see the peppers have started to soften a little bit, but they're mm -hmm. still holding their shape. You can smell them. I know, I love these aromatics. Let's put in our tomato onion mixture here. And would you mind turning the heat down to medium for me? You got it. Thank you. And let's add another half teaspoon of salt. So I'm gonna cook this for three to five minutes. I don't want the pot to get totally dry, but I do want it to reduce down a little bit. It's been about five minutes. You can see the tomato mixture has really cooked down there. Yeah, that's quite thick. It is quite thick, not totally dry, but it really did reduce down. The flavor's concentrated a little bit. So now I have one 14 ounce can of coconut milk. Mm. This'll make the stew nice and creamy and rich. It'll balance out the acidity from the tomatoes. So I'm gonna crank the heat up to high. We wanna bring this to a full rolling boil. Okay, so our stew is at a rolling boil here. It's bubbling all the way across the surface. Mm -hmm. So let's add our seafood into the Dutch oven. And now I'm adding the lime juice that I talked about before, two tablespoons, add a nice tart flavor. So I'm gently going to stir in the fish, and now I'm gonna do something crazy, I'm gonna turn off the heat. <laughs> <laughs> Put the lid on and slide this off the heat. Now the liquid, the coconut milk, was at 212 degrees, it was boiling really rapidly. The fish was basically at 40 degrees, fridge temperature. Mm -hmm. Now we're gonna let this sit for 15 minutes. As it sits, those temperatures will equalize. The fish will come to about 140, the shrimp will too, and that's, a, that's the temperature we like our seafood at. Yeah, and it protects the seafood from overcooking. 
foolproof way to cook your fish. So while our seafood is finishing up, we're going to make a nice hot sauce that's a traditional accompaniment to mm, the stew. Lovely. So good. In Brazil, they use something called a malagueta pepper. Mm -hmm. It's a spicy chili pepper. Hard to find here. Yes, very hard to find. So we're gonna be using pickled hot cherry peppers instead. These are pretty easy to find. You can find them near the pickles, near the roasted red peppers in the supermarket. Mm -hmm. So for these, you don't need to take the stems off. We're gonna put this in the food processor. They're tender, they're gonna get all chopped up. So for those, and then I have half an onion chopped up, quarter cup extra virgin olive oil, and an eighth of a teaspoon of sugar. Just a teeny bit to balance out those pickled peppers. So let's put this in the processor. There we go, okay, 30 seconds. All right, let's take a peek. That looks pretty good to me. Take a whiff of that. Ooh, that's spicy. This stuff is so good. <laughs> I would make a double batch because you oh, want really? it on eggs, on rice. Ooh. You're going to want this in your fridge. All right, let's get that in a bowl. The onion and the pickled peppers, so simple, so good. I'm just going to add a little touch of salt. Stir that in. That is done. Our seafood's just about done, so we'll tidy up and then we'll come back and eat. All right, the time has come. All right, can I take the lid off? You can. All right. Ooh. 15 minutes. Okay, I'm just gonna doctor this up a teeny bit before okay. we eat. I'm gonna add another half cup of chopped fresh cilantro, and I'm gonna add two tablespoons of the pepper mm -hmm. sauce that we made, just to give it a little kick. So that's where that bright citrusy punch comes from. That's right, along with the lime that we added right at the last minute. So I just wanna gently stir. I wanna be careful, I don't wanna break up all that beautiful cod. It is beautiful. I could see you serving this for company. Yeah, and it's low stress for the cook because yeah. it's off heat, you really can't overdo it. Your friends will be amazed. <laughs> <laughs> just like I'm about to amaze you, right? So we have some white rice already in the bowls. It's really nice to serve this with rice. Oh, that looks so good. That looks delicious. That's for you. Would you like some more of the Well, based on sauce? your recommendation, I am gonna put a little dollop on the top. Yeah, I recommend it. <laughs> yeah, the fish is so perfectly cooked. It's nice and tender. You're not gonna find rubbery shrimp. Mm. So. Mmm. Mm. It's rich, but it's bright. And it's hard to have something that tastes rich and bright at the same time. Yes, it's so satisfying, but it's on the lighter side still. Oh, I just ate a little bit of that relish. Mm. So good. Fish is perfectly cooked. Mm -hmm. It's so fresh tasting. Yeah. Becky, this is delicious. Well done. Thank you. So to make mokeka, cut a piece of cod down into one and a half inch pieces and toss with one pound of peeled and deveined lard shrimp, some garlic, salt, and pepper. Make a quick salsa in the food processor with a small can of peeled tomatoes, an onion, and some cilantro. After sauteing a red and green bell pepper in a large pot, Add the salsa and cook for just a few minutes until thickened. Stir in the coconut milk and bring to a boil. Then add the seafood and some lime juice. Cover and remove the pot from the heat for 15 minutes. Finish with a hot cherry pepper relish. You're eating mokeka. From America's Desk Kitchen to your kitchen, a wonderful new recipe for Brazilian shrimp and fish stew. I'm definitely making this. Oh, I know. Thanks for watching America's Test Kitchen. What'd you think? Well, leave a comment and let us know which recipes you're excited to make, or you can just say hello. You can find links to today's recipes and reviews in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you later. I'll see you later.